I'm going to read to you one sentence from a letter that I got from the gentleman who is selling me a house. Congrats on your brand new home. You will now have a home of your own with the freedom to do as you please. Now, why did this sales guy think that that was something worth talking to me about? This is a house you can do what you want in. Because I told him when I was when he was showing me the, around the property, <sighs> I'd been renting my entire life and I couldn't paint walls, I couldn't change anything, I couldn't change fixtures or an appliance that was cruddy. I always felt I've lived my entire adult life feeling like I was borrowing my home. And for the first time in my life, I'm gonna change that. <laughs> and at the same time, we talked about some of the political things going on, which became a conversation about freedom, and that's why he wrote that in that letter. And I'm starting this off with that story because I think that um, Freedom is something that people might not understand unless it's been inaccessible to them. It might also be something that scares people. I've been obsessing for like a week on why people aren't upset about all these rules and restrictions about COVID-19. Now granted, if you believe that COVID-19 is the deadly virus that you're being told on the news, I'm not gonna argue with you about that. Move on, watch another video. But I know a lot of people who, like myself, are looking at the numbers and looking at the follow-up articles that correct the BS that's told in the first news article and looking at the statistics and feeling that, not feeling, but seeing um, factually that the, the data on the virus does not show it to be um, the catastrophic pandemic that was presented to us. And there is absolutely no statistical evidence yet to, to uh, support the idea that we should all be wearing masks all the time. But here in Washington State, starting tomorrow, we all will be required to. So I thought I'd do this video because I need to explain why this bothers me. And I'm explaining it not because I need to get these feelings off my chest to you strangers, but because some of us were talking about this yesterday and a guy pointed out like, you know, if you say you don't want to wear a mask, you mostly just get mocked. Like, oh, you're complaining. Like, we need to be articulate about why we have a problem with this. Because for some of us, this is a deal breaker issue. This is where I break the law. This is where I go to jail. This is the line in the sand for me. I won't do it. And a lot of people right now have been already voluntarily wearing masks, even though they didn't think the virus really was bad enough to justify it. They've just been doing it because they were expected to. It was the polite thing to do. It was the compliant thing to do. So those of us who, who don't see it that way are in such a small minority that, you know, we're talking about rallying the troops and there's like, you know, maybe 20 people that show up. That's not, right? It's, it's a very small number of people that have a problem with this. So it's important that for those of us who do have a problem with it, that we try to use our words here, right? Instead of just acting like toddlers and going, Dah! which is what I'd like to be doing. I'm gonna really briefly run through kind of the basics on this and then get to kind of the heart of it for me. So um, one is personal logistical issues. Uh, a lot of us have like sort of structural issues with uh, navigating a world where everyone is wearing a mask, much less wearing one ourselves. So people that have anxiety issues, people that are on the spectrum, people um, that, you know, just, maybe are, are like traumatized by things in the past, want to see people's faces. In my case, I was born deaf in one ear and I've gone my whole life navigating that pretty darn comfortably because I was born that way. I was compensating from birth by learning to read lips to a degree. And we always kind of suspected that was the case because I, I definitely, my hear, hearing comprehension goes down when I can't see the person's face. So we. We always, like me and my parents, always suspected that that's what I was doing subconsciously. But during this situation where everyone's wearing a mask when I go to grocery stores and so on, it has become really clear. <laughs> like, I can't understand a thing anybody says. I mean, there's the combination of like, I have diminished hearing and your voice is muffled with a mask. And then there's also, I can't see what you're saying. Um, so I find it logistically very challenging from a hearing perspective. I know other people that have anxiety disorders, things I already mentioned. Um, that like there's a reason <laughs> that we don't usually wear masks it's not just because masks are uncomfortable it's because our entire like mental and sociological interrelational 
thing is based on being able to see each other's faces. And if you have any kind of health issues, anything like that, the burden is on the individual to defend their right not to wear a mask. If they go into a store, they're gonna get hassled. I've heard some horror stories of people that either didn't know that they were had to wear a mask at a given store um, or couldn't and and were like confronted by by people at these these stores it, putting an individual in the position of having to defend their disability is a reason why the ADA had those laws put in place and constitutionalists are saying hey those ADA laws need to be enforced meaning mask requirements are not um, enforceable like you you can't ask somebody to prove their disability. So you can't ask somebody to justify whether they have a medical reason or not to wear a mask. Therefore, you can't ask somebody why they're not wearing a mask, period. So that's one is like the logistical issues. Um, making individuals justify why they won't is not enforceable or, or legal or constitutional in this country. Two is that um, there is a clothing thing in terms of like making people have to wear something that is a very, I think, inherent to, to you know human nature that historically we've only used that to control people or to segregate people. So for instance, the Jewish badge that was used throughout medieval Europe and kind of resurrected by the Nazis, um, you know, to wear this this mark to to uh, so the rest of society knew as you were walking around that you were a Jewish person and therefore could be discriminated against or had different rights or privileges than the rest of society. Those kinds of practices are generally considered evil <laughs> because because for a government to dictate people wearing things is too often used to control the society and. As a woman, this is where it gets really triggering for me, if you will, and pardon me if I get a little feminist on you, but I've spent my entire life, because I'm a woman, with clothes being a factor and my appearance being a factor, and I am tired <laughs> of being judged, questioned, or bullied about what I am or am not wearing. And the mask for me is really, like when I, I'm joking about triggering things, because that's kind of a, a word I don't like to use because of the types of people that like to use it, but it is actually. I mean, I was bullied throughout middle school and high school because of what I was and wasn't wearing because I wouldn't wear the cool stuff because I didn't have the money to and didn't really like it anyway. Um, mostly by girls, you know, because girls can be incredibly cruel to each other and girls in my schools I went to were very cruel to me about how I looked. Okay, as a young woman, I was always very kind of reluctant to sort of dress up or look f pretty or feminine because I was very uncomfortable getting that kind of attention from men. It wasn't that I was afraid men were gonna like jump me and you know rape me or anything, but I, I just wasn't comfortable being viewed as someone who was pretty first or, or, or not pretty first for that matter, like being assessed by my aesthetics before anything else. It made me very uncomfortable which I think is actually one of the reasons a lot of young girls growing up right now are being lured into this transgender thing because it kind of sucks, honestly. If you're the kind of girl who just doesn't really want that to be the first thing people think about you, it it's uncomfortable and it could make people just want to be like, I don't even want to be part of this gender, okay? And that's something we need to process as a society. Like, I'm not saying like all men are predators, but I am saying we still have these issues of being perceived <laughs> <laughs> by how you dress and do your hair and your makeup and all this. It took me... It took me up until very recently to get over that kind of thing and to be like, well, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just be a woman. I'm gonna be okay with people looking at me that way. I'm gonna be okay with skirts and makeup and being dolled up if I want to and how people think about that. I'm, I'm going to be okay with how men act towards me. It's taken me my entire life to get over that. And I'm not going to go back to something where people are telling me what to wear or what not to wear or, or questioning or judging me about this. So. That's another thing. On a less personal note, 
I think the most significant part of this for a lot of us, male or female, is that we have been pushed into increasingly polarized, I'm sorry, I'm still having to collect myself. <sighs> okay. The mess we're in right now, where everything is political, everything is partisan, everything is polarizing, we have a lot of very controversial <laughs> things happening in our country right now. We have a lot of destructive activity happening. We have so much um, interpersonal conflict, like, like you know, how we each feel about these various issues is tearing friendships and, and families and communities apart. The reason that has happened is because for the last several years, for the last several years, we have been pushed, 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 pushed. Every single issue that is brought up by the mainstream political machine, I exclude Trump from that, but most politicians and most people on you know TV, CNN, NBC, CBS, mainstream news networks, NPR, take an issue, and it doesn't matter if the issue is abortion, climate change, a given uh, conflict with another country, uh, immigrants or immigration, um, the virus, equality, police brutality, the economy, <laughs> gender issues, every single one, I could go on and on and on, right, is we are given not just like this option versus that option. It's not like you're given two extremes to choose from. You're given an impossible option and an undesirable <laughs> option, right? So, so people talk about healthcare, that you should want, that healthcare should be a universal human right. Well, okay, that sounds great. I don't think anybody denies that people should have access to healthcare, but how do we get there, right? Everyone agrees that that we want equality. Everyone agrees that we want trustworthy police forces. Everyone agrees that we want, you know, people to be able to come from other countries into this country, but we disagree on how. And the problem with all of these polarizing narratives is that they, they, we basically have no civil discourse anymore. In fact, I had to look up what that phrase is even meant. <laughs> like, do you remember the last time you were able to calmly discuss an issue with somebody you disagree with and actually, get to a resolution. And was that resolution either of the two options that CNN presents with you, to you two? No, it was probably something much more nuanced and much more like uh, moderate <laughs> than, than what's being presented to us because that's how real life works. With this virus, we have been given the option of killing grandma, which is what the, narr the narrative is, is that if you, if you don't care about the virus, if you're a science denier, if you're not wearing a mask, if you're not doing all these things, then you're killing people. That's what you, that's how that's treated, right? Or you behave, you comply, you follow the rules, whether you agree with them or not, and you're a good person. We have gotten into this mess where we have the government taking more and more and more control over our lives. I don't care actually if we're talking about mayors, governors, or even the president. I mean, I love Donald Trump, but he's writing executive orders every other day. <laughs> like, we have never seen this level of government involvement in our lives. They are paying for us right now. They are keeping our businesses afloat. They're telling us now what to wear. They're telling us whether we can even operate our business and how we should do so. And they've given us hotlines to report each other if we don't behave. We have never been here as a country because this isn't how this country was founded. In fact, I was reading an article about the Bill of Rights and like what is and isn't in them. And this constitutional lawyer was saying, you know, they, they didn't list out all of these things that you had, the, you had freedom in because the point was to have a government that was so minimalist that you were free to do anything as long as it wasn't X, Y, and Z. <laughs> you know, it, wasn't, it wasn't like if it's not in there, you, we can take it away. It's like, assume it's all in the Bill of Rights, including my right not to wear a mask. 
we have to be able to sit down with each other and have nuanced discussion. We have to be able to take back as individuals, not just our freedoms, but our ability to have civil discourse, our ability to debate things, our ability to get down into, into the data and to argue things without emotional, judgmental, labeling, shaming dialogue that shuts the other side down and leaves us no nowhere, right? We're in the mess we're in because we can't discuss anything anymore. We are in the mess we're in because you get screamed at for wearing a mask and you get screamed at for requiring people to wear a mask. Like everybody's screaming at each other. This is what the machine wants. This is convenient to politicians who won't, then they, we're not gonna hold them accountable to do anything because we're busy yelling at each other. It's convenient to journalists because then they get the ratings and they also get kickbacks by, from the big corporations that own them <laughs> that have their you know comfortable little relationships with those politicians. It's all a machine and what it wants is for us to be fighting each other. I'm not going to wear a mask because I am tired of living in this madness. And if this is what I go to jail for, this is what I go to jail for. I don't know if I don't know if you can go to jail for a misdemeanor. This is how I have absolutely no idea how any of this works, but I guess I'll find out. Inslee is saying that it actually will be a misdemeanor if you're caught without a mask. You may say that I'm exaggerating the case to compare this to being, you know, forced to wear a badge in Nazi Germany, but I am arguing that that was exactly what Germans thought in the early 30s. Oh, it's not going to be that bad. Oh, it's just one thing. It's just another thing. It's just another thing. Every dictatorial government that has been put into place in the last, in the modern era, and I'll throw Russia into that mix, was allowed <laughs> every step of the way by people like you and I to do these little things. And the little things piled up into big things. And that is why we have been, we, I mean, as a conservative, you must know at this point, you're being censored on Facebook, you're being censored on, on Twitter, nobody's seeing your posts, nobody. <laughs> you're being shadow banned, stuff's getting deleted. The biggest, you know, uh, thinkers in our country have had accounts completely shut down because, because Twitter decided that they were mean. <laughs> Like, this is what's happening. We've been putting up with this level of control of how we think and how we act, and it's been getting worse and worse and worse, which is why, even though a lot of people understand that the virus is not a problem and that we, our economy requires us reopening, our mental health requires us reopening, our, the country, like, world, you know, stability requires us reopening. And yet you go along with wearing a mask and you go along with these rules because that's the polite thing to do. Well, no, actually that's not. That is allowing evil to have its way. I keep saying it and people keep telling me I'm exaggerating. I guess when you actually get put in a camp, you'll understand. I really hope it doesn't come to that. But this country did it to Japanese people in the 40s and they can do it to people again. And if you think behaving today is gonna to make it so they don't do that to you in the future, you're crazy. Because <laughs> all it's really doing is giving them permission to do more and more and more and more. We have to put our foot down now. I guess I'll find out what a misdemeanor looks like and I'll keep you posted. Cheers.